we're going to talk about the first screensaver. There were a lot of different concepts that were floated around before the first real screensaver concept that was published. The first real screensaver that you would really kind of know of, that's kind of known in general, is Atari's 2600 as they had used the technique for their video games like Breakout in like 1977 or the 70s to be able to prevent burn-in on those monitors. But there wasn't really a screensaver concept until John Socha's concept, which he had published with Soft Talk for PC IBM in 1983. In it, he discussed the concepts of what he was going for for building out this first screensaver concept, and you can see it was directly designed to actually work on helping out the idea of burn-in. So this is the first example in the discussion that John had that he shows. So the first line sets the default data segment to the BIOS data where hardware related information such as display settings is stored. This line here calculates the specific import and output port addresses that the program will use to control the video's adapter mode register. This line disables the video display by clearing bit two in the video mode control byte. This introduces a brief delay, allowing the video disable command to actually take effect. This controls the original control byte, re-enabling the video display. And finally, this terminates the program. It works. Again, I press that. And you notice the cursor stops and everything just kind of stops and everything. And it just kind of blanks out everything. Here is the main screen save application. So what's funny about this program is that the first real sections here basically from lines 10 to lines 280 is just an integrity check on the other lines here which is the data essentially this line here creates an array with a uh, index of 40. this first for loop reads in data of blocks of eight bytes and performs a zor based checksum on each block and displays progress dots this next for loop will read additional data and calculate out a final zor based checksum and compare each stored checksum to detect any errors then this section here actually creates a file on the computer called screen save com which will be the executable and then stores in 310 bytes into that file of the actual machine code that was verified. So the data that's actually in here is actual machine code. It monitors the clock, keyboard, and displays the output interrupts to determine when to activate the screensaver. And as far as John Socha, well, this was actually one of his side projects in particular. He's actually not really even known for this primarily. He's actually known for creating the Norton Commander, which is an orthodox file manager and he actually now currently works for Microsoft. Funny enough, Microsoft actually calls their screensaver exe, Screensave, which is the exact same name that John Socha used 